We are now ready to learn how to convert from atoms to moles. And if you haven't watched it yet and you're just learning these concepts, I would encourage you to, to watch my mole to atom video first. I covered just a few things there that apply to um, this particular tutorial as well. So I want to remind you that when we're working with atom mole conversions, the number that we are pulling out of our chemistry toolbox is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole. We've discussed that is just a, to get real technical, ginormous number, um, really only good for counting extremely tiny things like atoms and moles. What we're working with doesn't matter as much here, and what I mean by that is, I'll go back to the cookie and donut examples. If I have 24 cookies, you know that's two dozen because you know there are two dozen, or there, let me rephrase that, there are 12 anythings in a dozen. Um, if I have 24 donuts, that is two dozen donuts because again, you know there are 12 in a dozen and you're simply dividing by 12. Except for using a different number, the math is no different here. Just like we know there are 12 in a dozen, we also know there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. This time, they're telling us how many moles. This is like um, them saying, you have this many dozen, now how many individual things is that? If I've got three dozen eggs, exactly how many eggs is that? Well, we know it's um, 36. So the concept is just a little bit different here. So this time, we're starting with atoms. So um, looking at number one, we have 3.0 times 10 to the 21 atoms of sulfur. Write down that given. Long line, short line. So I've got um, quite a few atoms of sulfur here, and I want to know how many moles is that? And again, this is like me saying you've got 48 cookies. How many dozen is that? We know we would divide by 12. Likewise, um, we're going to divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd here. Another way you know that is if you'll remember, whatever unit is on the top is always on the bottom in the next step. So it makes sense we're going to be using your conversion flipped this way um, for these problems because we're going to need atom on the bottom. So there's a few ways you're going to know to put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms on the bottom. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur per mole. Again, mole is all by itself. That's an understood one. For simplicity, don't put a number with that for now. Atoms cancel. A lot of kids will say, well, what about the sulfurs? Don't those cancel too? That's just labeling what it is. That's just kind of good chemistry etiquette. You're keeping up with the substance you're working with all the way through the problem. So it's not canceling out. So this time, because we have one number on the top and one number on the bottom, we are simply going to divide 3.0 times 10 to the 21st by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Little reminder, remember, you are not writing this times 10. You are using your exponent button there. Your calculator may have EE, EXP. Um, some models have times 10 to the X. Make sure you're actually punching these numbers in as you follow along, and you'll know real quickly if you're um, hitting the right thing on your calculator. That's very important. If you have any trouble, you can drop me a comment, and I'll try to address that. So if we divide 3.0 times 10 to the 21 by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, we are getting 4.98 times 10 to the negative third moles of sulfur. Now, another thing I like to encourage my students to do is sit back and just ask yourself, does that look like a reasonable answer? Because we started with less than one mole of atoms, because we know a whole mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, we don't have anywhere near that many atoms here. It makes sense we're only going to have a fraction of a mole in our answer. That's why we have such a small number. That's like me saying, hey, if you've got two eggs, how many dozen is that? It's not even going to be a whole dozen. It's just going to be a small percentage of a dozen. Same concept here. All right, let's look at number two. 
We have 2.2 times 10 to the 24th atoms of sodium, and they want to know how many moles that is. So we're going to write 2.2 times 10 to the 24th atoms of sodium. Long line, short line, we know there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of anything, in this case, sodium, per mole. This went on the bottom because atoms cancel, and keeping in mind the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, that number is always attached to this word atom, at least for what we're doing today. You're gonna divide those two numbers, and you're gonna get 3.65 moles of sodium. Now, you ask yourself, does that answer make sense? It does, because we actually have more than a mole. You notice our exponent's 24 here. That's a lot bigger than 6.02 with an exponent um, of times 10 to the 23rd. So it makes sense this is more than one mole. This is, again, me saying, hey, you got 48 cookies. How many dozen is that? Well, you know that's going to be more than one dozen because there's only 12 in a dozen. So it makes sense, likewise, that since this is far more than the amount of one mole, that you're going to have more than one mole of sodium here. And the last one. Calculate the number of moles if you're given 1.8 times 10 to the 17th atoms of oxygen. 1.8 times 10 to the 17th atoms of oxygen. Long line, short line. We know there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen per mole, atoms cancel on the diagonal top to bottom, divide those two numbers, 1.8 times 10 to the 17th, divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. This is such good practice on working with those exponents. I cannot stress that enough. 2.99 times 10 to the negative 7. That is a little tiny number, but it makes sense moles of oxygen. That's a tiny number because this is nowhere near one mole. So it makes sense that our actual number of moles is going to be much smaller. A couple things I'll point out before we um, wrap up this lesson. Again, notice we did not use any masses from the periodic table here. That's because grams were not involved. They didn't ask me for grams. They didn't give me grams. They didn't ask me for a mass. They didn't give me a mass. For these problems, they simply want to know how many, and we're just really looking at a numerical value. So the next tutorial is actually going to be putting these gram mole problems with these mole atom problems, and we're going to see how they can link up and make a larger, but honestly just a simple um, problem.